coming up, an interview with one of the most interesting frontmen in music on his band's signature song. A song that has one of the most iconic opening lines of the last 30 years. I do have to admit, I was a little intimidated to uh, interview this guy because he's wicked smart. I'll have to see how I did. His explanation of the meaning of this song, it's pretty sobering. As he says, you can explode into the world with great magnificence and still feel like the guy underneath the uh, Mickey Mouse head with the fan batteries that have stopped working properly and it's dark under there and everybody wants your autograph. See what else he says next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember waiting in line around the block for tickets to the great blockbuster movies of the 70s and 80s, whether the Star Wars franchise, Indiana Jones, or Back to the Future, you're going to dig this channel of daily nostalgia. Make sure that you subscribe below right now and click the bell so that you always know when our new interviews are dropping. And we've got a lot of great new interviews coming out. I'm doing a couple a week. Also, check out our exclusive content on Patreon. It helps us keep it a daily channel. And check out our POR merch below. So I'm excited to bring you yet another episode from our series, Revelations. This is where featured artists go deep on their greatest songs and albums with uh, amazing insight that you won't find anywhere else. Today's episode is pretty cool. You know, mainstream music started to go downhill in the 90s, in my opinion. Pretty much went off a cliff after 95. That's how I see it. Just when I thought there was no hope left, this band came out of nowhere in 1996. They weren't grunge. They weren't pop. They really weren't even alternative, though that's where the tastemakers tried to categorize them. Uh, they stepped into a world full of uh, post-grunge. You know, Kurt Cobain had already passed away. And after a summer that was dominated by the Macarena and Mariah Carey, the band Cake was a welcome arrival with their catchy and cool ditty, The Distance. He's going the distance. He's going for speed. It grabbed you from the opening line and it seduced you with Greg Brown's cracking guitar and John McCrasis speak sing one liners. Owl shaking earthquakes of doubt and remorse. Assail him, impale him with monster truck force. I tell you, it was glorious. The distance, it was unlike anything on the radio, and it, it's become a classic since. In his mind, he's still driving, still making the grade. She's hoping in time that her memories will fade. It was a hit across the globe. It went to number 22 in the UK, number 15 in Belgium. It went to number 20 in Scotland, number five on the Canada rock charts. Because he's racing and pacing and plotting the course. He's fighting and fighting and riding on his... Here in the US, it hit several charts, 38 on the rock charts, number four on the alternative charts, and it went to number 35 on the U.S. radio charts. Again, you couldn't really categorize or label these guys. They did what they wanted. It was their own sound. And they were beloved by all types, which is why their debut album, Fashion Nugget, went two times platinum. And it was a hit clear into 97. And their follow-up, that was a hit as well. It's a cover of Gloria Gaynor's hit, I Will Survive. I'm excited to share an interview I did with one of the most interesting front men in music, John McCree uh, of Cake, about this classic song and this classic album. Like I said, I was a little intimidated. He's a really smart guy. Um, I hope you'll enjoy it. Let's get into this. As we delve into this interview, though, I do want to recognize our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I wear on the daily here. You know, Zenny's slogan is eyewear for everyone. And, you know, it's true. When you shop at Zenny, you have so much variety, so many styles to choose from, so many different types of frames, you know. There's prescription eyewear, sunglasses, uh, also, there are new transition lenses that go from light to dark when you go from indoors to outdoors. Here you'll get the best prices. Click on our special POR link right here, the info button, or it's below, and it'll take you there. Here's John. They deftly maneuver and muscle for rank, fuel burning fast on an empty tank. In 96, when Fashion Nugget came out, and that was where I discovered it, you guys, that really spoke to my friends and I in our group. Even the album covers, you guys have such a unique way of presenting the music. 
And of course, now with digital music, that's not as commonplace. But Fashion Nugget went platinum in the U.S., gold in Canada. The Distance, number four alternative rock hit, number 38 on the mainstream rock chart. I mean, it, it went through all the charts. I mean, it was big in the U.K. and Australia, number 22 in the U.K., and it was, I know, written by former guitarist Greg Brown. What made that song unique was your interpretation of it, the way that you approached it vocally. Frank Sinatra is my favorite of all time. He didn't write any of his own music. Mm -hmm. But he was always able to take anybody's song and interpret it where he owned the song. So to me... Yeah. Let's talk about Frank Sinatra for a little while if you want. He was genius in yeah. terms of rhythmic intelligence. His phrasing empowered the song and and interfaced with the song with the the orchestral or whatever arrangement but it was just one of those he knew exactly which places needed to exactly. em emphasis and that's a form of genius I mean, even a song like night and day yeah it's been covered by everybody yeah he can take it and cover it when he's a young buck in the 40s and 50s mm -hmm. and it can be that swing in night and day, day and night. And then cover it again in the reprise years yeah. and bring so many more layers to mm. it with yeah. his voice and what he's been through. You yeah. can hear the Jack Daniels. You can hear the nights of struggle mm. and the heartbreak and all those yeah. kinds of things. I mean, he tells a story. Night and day. Yeah, totally. You know, I mean, I love Ella Fitzgerald's version of that song. But Frank Sinatra does knock it out of the park, you know. Yes. But yeah, so uh, yeah, the distance was... Uh, I think um, I, I recorded that vocal and wanted to do a couple more takes of the vocal. And Greg told me not to. He said, if you change it, you'll ruin it. So I give yeah. him, a, you know, I think I have changed the delivery of that song for the better over the years. Like there are a couple of things that I do now that I think rhythmically makes sense. Going the distance. But I think I got lucky with that, you know. Well, well, speaking of Frank Sinatra, that's how he would do it. He would sing it two or three times. If he didn't get it, he'd move on. Yeah. Right? Because he wanted to get in the moment. That's, that's the way to do it. Also, you can't feel any joy for a song that you've been Some trying to sing 37 times. Yeah. Um, and that's the way I write songs too. I'll have a chorus and a, and a maybe one verse and I'll try for a while to finish it. And if I can't finish it, I'll just go on to another one and maybe not revisit that song for five years because I, I just don't want to get sick of anything. I mean, this is why it's music, right? Yeah. There's supposed to be some joy in it. You know, it's not supposed to be forced. Exactly. So... Yeah. Well, the distance, I mean, that's often equated to sports, achievement, that kind of thing, because of the expression going the distance. But to me, it spoke to just everyday struggles. Yeah. And that tongue in cheek of the way it's delivered, but also very sincere. It's like a, that's mm -hmm. a hard balance to maintain, yeah. to be able to, because if you're tongue in cheek the whole time, it comes off as a silly song. If you're totally sincere, then might be a little bit overcompensating. It feels like there's a really good balance there. I think it's the only song, I've looked this up, in history of the world hmm. that starts with the word reluctantly. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it's counterintuitive to start with reluctantly. Reluctantly crouched at the starting line. Tell me about what you felt when you were recording it and what that song means to you. Uh, well, I mean, it is a, a song about success and failure and failure of success, really. It's a sad song. It is. Yeah, because there is no success, right? <laughs> That's so sad, right? You can, you can explode into the world uh, with great magnificence and still feel like the guy underneath the Mickey Mouse uh, head. Right. And the, with the batteries, that are, the fan batteries are, have stopped working properly. <laughs> and it's dark under there. And everybody wants your autograph, you know. I love because that. Because you're, you're Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah. Key lyric, he's haunted by something he cannot define. 
bowel-shaking earthquakes of doubt and remorse. I sail him, impale him with monster truck force. In his mind, he's still driving, still making the grade. Song gels so well. I want to ask you about some of the musical aspects of it. The prominence of the trumpet, which of course would become a signature for you guys. What do you remember about putting those elements together? Because you also have the guitar riff that, for my money, is as good of a guitar riff as out there. I mean, it stands right beside the great ones. You yeah. know, you remember it, drives the song, the bass, and even the way you start the song. Mm. Tell me about those elements. I remember working on the song quite a bit with Greg Brown. He had a lot of these parts written and sort of, he had the parts going the entire way through the song. Like that guitar riff that you like didn't stop. And it went the whole time through every verse. And so I ended up saying, no, we're gonna wait. We're gonna use this later and we'll start with the bass. And, um, and I think that really helped the song in that it is a collection of really great parts. You know, sometimes the inclination is to just put everything you have into something. But sometimes it's um, absence uh, that that actually is you know it's 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 air that is more valuable than stuff. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Because the variations when you hear the bass line, then your voice come in, then you start to hear the drums, then you hear the trumpet, then you hear the background vocals. It separates it for mm -hmm. you and adds a new piece on. So your ears, yeah. you appreciate all those layers. Yeah. A lot of times in music, especially these days, they throw in 15 hooks right at the beginning and you're like, what is this? The human brain is incapable of really accessing everything all at once. It just, yeah. you can enjoy, like viscerally enjoy, I think two or three counterpoint melodies. But when it gets, when you get to four or five, it's like, you're not, there's not room. Well, the song feels like almost a race to the finish line. That's what's cool about mm -hmm. it. The music gives it that feeling. But tell me about what you remember about incorporating the melodica. <laughs> because that is, I mean, that was an instrument that my friends and I heard in hip hop, but right. not a lot in pop music. He's going the distance. He's going for speed. Well, I mean, we were listening to hip hop and we were listening to rap and there were things about it that seemed to make sense to us. We weren't trying to ape rap in any way because you can tell from the way I delivered the song, I wasn't trying to sort of force my way into that subculture. But I think that there is something really smart about just a melody that, that cuts through everything really cleanly and deliberately. The other thing I love about the song is a little bit different than the time is that you actually talked about he and she. It wasn't just a song about a he. Mm -hmm. So that anybody could put themselves in that context yeah. of the song. Yeah. Desperation you know? for everyone. She's all alone, all alone, all alone in a time of need. The video too was always fun to watch in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. I mean, because immediately you would think if you heard the song, because I heard the song first before the video, but then when you see the video, you'd almost assume it would be a sports thing if you made a, a, a swift judgment on it. But I also love when you're holding the, the Santa Claus head. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> uh, it was just an impulsive uh, yeah. decision. But it had to do with capitalism, probably. Well, of course, been covered by Reliant K. I don't know if you ever heard their version. No. Alvin and the Chipmunks, which kind of introduced it to a, a new generation. <laughs> Instrumental version. Saddle Sore Galactica episode of The Simpsons. Tell mm. me what you thought when you, you saw that. It, you know, it was, you know, stunning to have anything uh, included in The Simpsons. Yeah, that was remarkable, a feeling. I don't, I'm trying to describe it, but yeah, it was sort of thrilling. Yeah. I mean, what a great show. And in later years, they actually used Instead of the instrumental version and the reruns, they used the original version of the song. I thought they should have used the original version to I know, begin, begin with. with yeah. Yeah. Of course, been used to plug all sorts of sporting events from Tour de France. 
we have no control over NASCAR that. and <laughs> we we'd rather they stopped doing that no kidding He's going the distance. what wisdom would you impart at this point that you've learned from other people coming up in the industry to anybody who is not only coming up in the music industry but also just in art or in just everyday life like mm -hmm. what, what would you impart if you had if you learned well i don't think it's unique to this particular time period but i will say that um uh, if you're a musician you should let the music lead you shouldn't let culture lead you shouldn't uh you shouldn't let anything else money um uh you should just follow the music and then you'll have a good time and if you have a good time other people might have a good time not necessarily but at least you're having a good time <laughs> um and you'll sound better you know i think when people uh think too much about uh music but also i'm sure other kinds of art it it becomes kind of desiccated well people can tell when you're being real or when it is it's real it's it's emotion it's from the heart or if somebody's just trying to write a hit i think so yeah and i think sometimes when people try to write a hit it's there's this there's a sincerity in the middle of it too it but sometimes if you know you know there are songs and i think they're very irritating songs that you know um are just vapid you know and uh, sound forced so yeah, I mean that's the best. I wish, I think, I think I I took that advice myself, but I think it's uh I think it's the best advice you can you can have is just let the music lead. You know. Love that. Thank you for sharing that. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Ah oh, man, I gotta go listen to the distance again. It's such a great song. I tell you, this song, it's going to be a hit with every generation. You know, thinking about it, my test is this. I just let this song play uh, a couple of months ago while I was working in my office. And uh, within about 60 seconds, my son and his friends came in and they're like, who sings this? This is a pretty cool song. It's how the distance is. It just hooks you from the beginning. So leave us a comment about Cake and this cool classic. What do you remember about Fashion Nugget and about the distance and the end of 96 going into 97? Let us know below. Let's have a great discussion. To get more of this interview and many others, click on our Patreon link below. You'll get more there. If this content resonates with you, just subscribe below. We'd love to have you. It's all about keeping the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Mm -hmm.